Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. This video was supposed to be released about three weeks ago, but I've been procrastinating. Alright, this would be the last video in this series. I'll do my best to tie up all the loose ends and give you a satisfying conclusion. With that said, let's get into why you clicked on this video. Continuing from last video, I'll go to the story JSON file, navigate to 002, proceed cautiously, and add an extra choice. This is how we'll implement stats into our narratives. We'll create a choice text key, a requirement key that checks if the player has 20 mana points, a buff key, and in its value, we'll create a key for the stats we would like to affect if all the requirements are met. In this case, we'll use a mana key with a value of minus 20 and a health key with a value of plus 1. The output key is where the story goes if the requirements are met and the field output key directs the story if the requirements are not met. Now, we can go to the game scene and add a script. In this script, we will create a stats variable to store our stats and an unready variable referencing our stats label node. In the ready function, we will set the text in the stats label node to display the stats from our stats variable. Then, in the process function, we will create the stats shown in the stats label node every frame. Next, go to the content container script and create player stats used HP is dead and shown health variables. We will also create an export variable for the stats page, death page, and low mana page. In the ready function, set the current page to the stats page. I will go ahead and add a stat indicator as an unready variable to reference the label node that will display the change in stats. It will be a rich text label node that is the child of the text container node. Make sure you enable BB code and click fit content in the inspector tab so that you can see the text. Now, going back to our script, we can attach our newly made node to the stat indicator unready variable. In the ready function, we will set the start indicator text to empty parentheses. After the ready function, we can add a process function in it. We will set the player start variable to mirror the start variable we assigned to the game screen script earlier in the video. Now, we can check if the player's health drops to zero or less. If it does, we can set the choice button to display the choices available on the death page. In the process choice function, we reset the start indicator text if is dead is true, we set the current page to death page. We check for requirements in our choices and change the color of the stats indicator text to reflect whether the player received an increase or decrease in their stats points. We also write some code that reduces the player's health if they try to take an action that requires more mana than they currently have, since mana is a form of life force. Here, we also apply buffs if they are found in the selected choice. In the set choice button function, if is dead is false, we set the choice buttons to the choices in output value. Otherwise, if is dead is true, we set the choice buttons to match the choices available on death page. Now, if we run this, we see that everything works. In this instance, I want to take an action that requires mana I don't have. Watch what happens when I take the action. Of course, I can come here and change my starting stats. Now, let me bump up my mana and see how our previous interaction would go. Now, dear viewer, take this project and do what you would like with it. Maybe implement a main menu and a save system. Perhaps you could add a character selection that starts the player out with predetermined stats. The door is open. This is the last episode of the series and the files and projects will be available on GitHub. I would love to hear your comments. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And remember, keep the code flowing and the passion glowing. Power hack out.